Today I'm going to make a response video because someone sent me a comment on a video that I did on subtraction. And they basically stated that the technique was good for small numbers but not for large numbers. That the way that we learned it in school was better applied to this technique if numbers were large. And I want to show you that this technique is, first of all, very easy to learn and very useful. And I would state that it's better than what was shown in traditional schools for subtraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a very large number here. And I'm going to explain the techniques so you can learn this. Now one thing I want to tell you is that it's important that you look this technique twice. Watch the video at least twice. Use your own pad and pen. Write the number down and work through the technique. Now, what you want to do is write a number that is, just for practice, large, and each number should be larger than the number on top. For example, you see here, every number except for the first number is bigger than the one on top. Because if the number on the bottom was bigger, it would be a negative number. We're going to deal with real numbers. So, what you're going to do is this. You're going to look at the number on the bottom as a portion of 10. For example, you see a 7, you say 7 and what is 10 is a 3. And again, you see 6 and what is 10 is a 4. 9 is a 1. 7 is 3 again. 8, 2, 6 is 4. And the last number is going to be a small number, so you just do a natural progression of that. You don't have to do any fraction. Just use that as it is normally applied. Then what you're going to do, you're going to start to add that fraction to the number on top. Okay? So what you do here is you say 3 and 3 and it will give you a 6. Okay? Now that's very important that you do that. You don't subtract, you add. So you, you say 3 and 3 is 6. You write down a 6. Then what happens is as you start to move over towards the ultimate number, you subtract 1 from every digit. Okay? So every number on top is reduced by 1. So the the 4 is, is a 3, the 8 is a 7, the 1 is a 0, 2 is a 1, 6 is a 5, 4 is 3, and 7 is 6. That's just how you do it, okay? So review that again. Numbers are all large on the bottom, smaller on top. It's a natural number, so therefore the last number is going to be smaller. Look at the fraction of that number as it, as it pertains to 10. And you add up. Put the number down. As you move toward the last number, each number is reduced by 1. It's very simple. Just reduce it by 1. Okay? If you can't remember that, if it seems hard, then do it normally. You would do, for example, you would go 4 and 4 is 8, but then you would write down 7 because you reduce it by 1. Either way, you want to reduce the answer by 1. Okay? And so I would just say, just look at the number as being a 3 and take it from there. When you get to the final number, it will be reduced by 1 as well. And you simply do this, just the simple math. Okay, so if this last number was reduced by 1, it would be a 6. And then you take away 5, it's a 1. Okay? So that's how that works. So I actually wrote the answer down here. You can see this. And I'm going to do this example for you. I want you to look at your own pencil and your own pad and write this out as I'm telling you this over the video. So the first number again, you say 3 and 3 is 6. Move over, reduce that 4 to a 3. 4 and 3 is 7. Reduce the 8 to a 7. 1 and 7 are 8. 9's are very easy to work with. Okay, Put down your 8. The 1 is a 0, so it's just 1. The 2 is a 1. So it's 3 and 1, 4. The 6 is a 5. So it's 2 and 5, 7. The 4 is a 3. 4 and 3, 7. And the 7 is a 6. So it's a 1. And that's how it's done. Now, that is so simple. You didn't have to think about, well, you stop and you borrow. And you start to make something into something that is different to borrow from. It's a step you have to mentally stop and think. Well this way you simply just apply technique. Okay? Now of course 
if it was a mixture of numbers, if it was some that were larger, some that were smaller, if if a number is like a natural number, if you were just doing the, the seven and the five, you just go two. But if it was next to numbers you dealt with, then it would still reduce by one, okay? Which is still simple. So you got the six, you would go, you would, now, of course, when you start off, it's just a natural number. So there's nothing else there. So the six would be, would be four and four, it'd be eight, and then it would make that seven go to a six. It'll be a one, okay? So it's not hard to do, but what I want you to do is you research your own experience with this here. Master the technique, and then you start to have fun with it, play with it. And you can challenge your friends to see who can subtract faster, using the traditional method or the one I'm showing you here, okay? Because this is not really a math trick. It's a simplified version using observation, and it's more of a natural way how your mind perceives numbers for all particular uh, means of doing math. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, division, anything. This is simply a fast way of subtraction. So again, watch the video more than once. Use your rewind, pause, work through this technique with a pen and pad in hand, and give yourself at least a week. Just work to your own comfort then you can judge it against what you learned in the past. So I always say this, judge slowly and learn. Not tricks, but techniques that help you to improve your mind and get a better example of what you're trying to do and a better experience out of your learning experience for your life. Thank you for watching and have a great day.